after uh, Kartik Mas uh, meditation. And um, I'm very fortunate that, you know, we could do this for the entire month, spend some time from Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam in understanding some of the important aspects of doing Damodar or Kartik Brat. <clears throat> Damodar or Kartik Brat comes every year, but it becomes special if you are also hearing the importance and the significance of it, not just from one angle or from one perspective, but from different Vedic perspectives. <clears throat> so uh, we've been hearing this verse the entire month. Yeshant vantagatam papam jananam punya karmanam te dvanda moha nirmukta bhajante maam dridhavrata. So, as we have been seeing, that Krishna says, this is a clue as to how we can come out of this um, material world, the bondage. Yeshantu antagatam papa. First, our sinful activities has to come to an end. Complete full stop. Then jananam punya karmanam. And then one has to engage in spiritual activities. It is only then that a person becomes free from dualities and illusion. Dvandva moha nirmukta. Nirmukta means completely being freed. Bhajante maam dridhavrata. That one engages in devotional service to me with firm determination. And every day when I start this, I usually get caught up with what we have done previously. And by the time we come to the actual meditation for the day, it becomes late. So today being the last day of Kartik month, I thought what should be an appropriate concluding thought or theme so that it stays with us, so that we feel sufficiently inspired, not just to stop this process today, but to continue it for the rest of our life. So with that uh, idea, I thought there is a very nice verse in uh, Bhagavad Gita which kind of um, uh, sums up and a very powerful, very interesting concept or a theme uh, which Krishna mentions in Bhagavad Gita. This verse comes in the fifth chapter of Bhagavad Gita and the verse number is 17. The verse is tad buddhayas tad atmanas tad nishthas tad parayanaha gachanti apunaravratim Jnana Nirdhruta Kalmasha. This verse is actually um, certainly one of my favorite verses, but it is also one of those verses which we may not know. But it's a very, very powerful verse, very important verse. Krishna is telling uh, some very important things in this. Tad buddhayas tad atmanas tad nishthas tad parayanaha. Gachanti apunaravratim jnana nirdhuta karmasha. Let me quickly read the translation and purport and then see something that we can discuss from this. When one's intelligence, mind, faith, and refuse are all fixed in the Supreme, then one becomes fully cleansed of misgivings through complete knowledge and thus proceeds straight on the path of liberation. Purport by Shri Prabhupada, the Supreme Transcendental Truth is Lord Krishna. The whole Bhagavad Gita centers around the declaration that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is the version of all Vedic literature. Paratattva means the Supreme Reality, who is understood by the knowers of the Supreme as Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. Bhagavan or the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the last word in the Absolute. There is nothing more than that. The Lord says, Matta Parataram Nanyat Kinche Dasti Dhananjaya. Impersonal Brahman is also supported by Krishna. Brahmano hi pratishtaham. Therefore, in all ways, Krishna is the supreme reality. One whose mind, intelligence, faith, and refuse are always in Krishna. Or in other words, one who is fully in Krishna consciousness is undoubtedly washed clean of all misgivings and is in perfect knowledge in everything concerning transcendence. A Krishna conscious person can thoroughly understand that there is duality, simultaneous identity and individuality in Krishna 
and equipped with such transcendental knowledge, one can make steady progress on the path of liberation. Those of you who have never seen this verse in your entire life, and those of you who have seen sometimes, please go and see again. Because this verse and this translation and purport, as I said, it's, it's just amazing. It's very, very powerful. So the thought for today first, let me tell what it is. The thought for today is misgiving. And what is misgiving and why it is a theme to meditate on the last day. So to see the verse again. Krishna is telling here, <clears throat> Jnana Nirdhuta Kalma Shaha. So the word used here is Kalma Shaha. Kalma Shaha means misgivings. It is the only time, probably in the entire Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita, you will find the word Kalma Shaha is translated as misgivings. What is misgiving? Misgiving is something, let's say we start a relationship with someone or we do something together, but in between there is some kind of strain, distrust, doubts, or some kind of um, lack of faith. And that gives, that becomes misgiving. I was hearing in one lecture, I don't remember when it, what was it, maybe Chaitanya Charitamrath or Nectar of Devotion by Srila Prabhupada, where he's explaining this word misgiving. And he says it's very simple. What does this word misgiving mean? It is missing the real goal of life, which is giving ourselves to Krishna. If we miss that, then the whole life is disturbance, there is distrust, there is lack of peace, all these things comes. So missing in giving what we have, our time, energy, resources to Krishna and rather giving it for sense gratification. So if that happens, then it leads to all these kinds of you know, doubts, distrust, all these kind of uh, tensions, anxieties, and worries. So very interestingly, uh, there is one incident which happened in, uh, in the Chaitanya Charitamrit, which is very glorified, often talked about, very, very interesting. We all know about it, but when we read it very clearly, very uh, minutely, very um, scrutinizingly, we can understand how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also stresses on this word misgiving. And this happened in the incident of Gundicha Marjana, where you know the entire Gundicha temple was cleansed by the devotees, including Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. So in that, there are twice the temple has been cleaned. First time, grossly, all the dirt, everything from the temple was cleansed, fully, full cleanse, full cleansing. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that first cleansing of the temple is like removing the sinful tendencies or the gross sinful um, proclivities and sinful actions in our heart. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was not satisfied with the first cleaning. He then again asked to do another round of cleaning. And devotees were deeply engaged in finding the corners the straws, those little dusts here and there, which don't get cleansed at the first, uh, first cleaning. And they were, they were making a mound of all those, how much one can collect. And only those who could gather the most was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very pleased. And those who were not able to do, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went and chastised them mildly, criticized them. Oh, your mound looks so big. It was a mild chastisement, but a firm chastisement. Somebody who doesn't have a big mound doesn't mean that he is very clean. It is just that he is unable to see, identify, 
and acknowledge and accept the misgivings within. And this misgivings, what it does, and this is a long purport which Prabhupada has written, very, very powerful, very nice purport. One of the things which Prabhupada says is in that purport, sometimes devotees, even though they take up to this process of devotion, which is rare, but even though they take up to this process of devotion and they grossly overcome some of the gross things that they should not do, the subtle misgivings in the heart still remain. And those misgivings are puja, labha, pratishta. People should recognize me and notice me and pat me. People should acknowledge my service. If they didn't know what I did, what is the point? I should get this. Very subtle. And they don't go. But what happens? Okay, let's say it doesn't go. What is the problem with that? What it does is, very, very powerfully Prabhupada explains in that purport is, this misgivings create doubts in our mind. If we are feeling disturbed when some service is allocated, if we are feeling not, you know, when the service is given, there is some kind of this thing, the doubts, dissensions, all these are social intercourse. This happens because we lack faith in Krishna. It affects our faith. You want example? Classic example of this is given in Bhagavatam in the life of Ajamil. Ajamil was a Naishtika Brahmachari following all the regulations, completely fixed in devotion. But then, because of certain misgiving in his heart, he got attached to the form of the Lord instead of becoming a form of a Sudrani instead of being attached to the Lord. And this is what exactly happens. What happened in the case of Ajamil is he got diverted in this four different ways, which Krishna is mentioning. Tat buddhayas. First is intelligence. The intelligence gets diverted. Tat atmanas. Then the mind. Tat nishthas. Then the faith. Tat parayana. And the, the place where we take refuse, where we take shelter. Everything got misdirected. Because of the misdirection, even if he was engaged in devotional service, instead of being fixed up in Krishna, he got fixed up in the form of that Sudrani. And in some way or other, he was thinking, how will I meet her? How, how, will, I, uh, how will I be engaged in uh, having her? Or how will I... He was married. He had a chaste wife. He had his parents. But, you know, just that form got attached in his mind that he got completely diverted. And he not only married uh, this Sudrani, he drove away the chaste wife. The entire aim of life is changed after that. So sometimes we don't realize that this subtle things, our intelligence also justifies at that time. Our mind also gets convinced. And when that happens, and the aim of life is changed, there is no faith in Krishna. And there is no shelter in Krishna. The shelter also has changed. Exactly that is what happened in the life of Ajamil. And then he brought all this, uh, you know, people, this uh, Sudrani had 10 children from her. And the youngest one at the age of 80. But somehow Krishna says, because he was engaged in devotional service, he got the good intelligence to name him as Narayana. We will come to that. That, that is the concluding part. But the interesting thing is, a person who was fixed in devotion also got diverted because tad buddhayas, tad atmanas, tad nishtas, tad parayana. Four things Krishna is telling. Intelligence and mind. If the intelligence is misused, misuse of intelligence, then the mind cannot be controlled. Intelligence actually misdirects a person. Slidingly, slipping, seepishly, I just go away. A devotional service is coming. So nobody should see. I'm so intelligent. I can do this. I'll hide from everyone and go and do something else which nobody knows. Oh, who am I harming? I'm actually not serving Krishna. That is not the whole purpose of using us. This is a misuse of intelligence. People who misuse their intelligence, thinking that I can enjoy my senses in this way and that way, get cheated actually themselves. And they themselves are dis disturbed. There is always distrust, uh, lack of faith. And there, there's no shelter. Tat Parayan, it is telling refuse. Refuse in Krishna doesn't come. 
So in that case, just not just Ajamil, you know, okay, let me pause for a while, but I was just wanted to switch to another one. But then when this happened, actually his uh, Bhagavatam says, our aim in life gets polluted without even our knowledge. Without our knowing, when we are attached to something material, need not be only gross, simple, like, a, uh, you know, looking at a uh, woman in a lustful way or something like that. Not even that. Even something very material, if you are too attached, money or something like that, then the whole aim of life is changed. I remember Stoka Maharaj, hardly he says his, his stories, but he had told this story long back about a rich, wealthy man in his village. And that rich, wealthy man, he was very famous also. So when he was about to die, all the villagers, everybody was um, you know, asked to come that he's going to quit his body. So his sons were there, his daughters were there, his daughter-in-laws were there, his wife was present, everybody was present. And this man was bedridden, he was lying on the bed. And then he, um, they were all eagerly, anxiously waiting what this man is going to say. And, uh, you know, as we were seeing yesterday, Kanthavarodhana, it is very difficult to speak at the time of death. And this Kafavata Pitte, there is an imbalance in this Kafavata Pitte. So it's not easy. But that person, he somehow gathered some strength and just, you know, lifted himself up. And with a choked voice, they were saying, they were waiting anxiously. Probably he's going to reveal where the wealth is stored. Because, you know, those days they were not putting it in some bank or some safe lockers and all, but rather, you know, under the pillow or somewhere digging underneath the tree or in the wall somewhere, they would have they would have hidden. So they were all eagerly waiting. What is he going to say? But with a great, you know, choked voice, he said, <clears throat> my neighbor, our neighbor, he has taken two balls of sugar yesterday, not returned, and died. See, so the little wealth, wealthy man had everything, so one very important thing I remember Maharaj saying that, you know, never at the time of death think who's going to take care of what, who's going to take care of my whatever, X, Y, Z or something and die with that kind of a thought. So our aim gets polluted. One of the things that we had taken earlier in one of our earlier meditation, that's a very nice verse. That verse is, Pivanti ye Bhagavata Atmanaha Satam our aims in life get contaminated, polluted, Bhagavatam uses. Punanti te vishaya vidusita. Vidusita is to become polluted. Vidushita. Vidusita sayam. Aim of life becomes completely polluted. But this polluted aim of life can be purified. Punanti. By how? Vibanti ye bhagavata atmanah satam. Katha amritam shavana putesu samritam. When we drink the nectarian beverage of Krishna katha, that our heart gets cleansed. That it becomes redirected. Vishaya Vidusita Sam. All this, you know, Vishaya Vidusita, I mean, our aim in life itself is polluted. It can simply be purified by hearing. Pibanti Bhagavata Atmana Satam. Pibanti you have to drink. Katham Ratam Shravana Puteshu Sambhritam. When it goes through our ear holes, Shravana Puteshu, it cleanses, it purifies. Prajantita Sarana Saror Vantikam. Not just this uh, uh, incident of Ajamil, but also if you see the life of uh, um, Bharat Maharaj. Bharat Maharaj, exalted devotee, reached the stage of bhava. And then, um, you know, he was in the forest, got attached to just a baby innocent deer. There was no other shelter of that deer. And Bharat Maharaj thought it is his responsibility. Being a devotee, he should take care of him. But he got so attached to this baby deer that, you know, Bhagavata mentions every time he would talk to this inanimate objects also, trees, stones. Have you seen that deer? Where that deer has gone? My deer, my baby deer, where has it gone? There is a picture of 
in the bhagavatam if you see there is a picture where bharat maharaj is holding the hand the leg of the deer they are holding it like like a son he is sitting very innocent very very nice deer even to the extent when bharat maharaj was looking at the moon you see on the moon there will be some spots some black spots so bharat maharaj is asking moon is it that you know that my deer has gone to moon and this black spots are his hoof prints so much attached same bharat maharaj great exalted devotee who gave up so many things he gave up his kingdom he gave up his this things went to the forest was doing meditation got attached to a simple baby deer the result of that is he took birth as a deer so vishanti uh, vishaya uh, vidushita sayam our aim in life gets polluted we don't realize actually it is the misuse of our intelligence the intelligence is also coming from the lord buddhir buddhimata i am the intelligence of the intelligent matta smritir gyanam apohanam cha the lord is giving us the intelligence but if we misuse that intelligence then our mind becomes distracted and when the mind is distracted intelligence is not able to control and when both of these th- things happen then our faith in krishna also becomes sl- slackened and when the faith is slackened there is no shelter in krishna we look shelter elsewhere this is exactly is the problem and sometimes you know when we see we have lack of faith lack of trust lack of this thing in our life everything looks doubtful we are critical that's all because of we don't have faith we don't have this thing or our intelligence and mind is not fixed in krishna and then we blame everybody in the world everything is wrong this is wrong that is wrong this is not to be done this is how no no we never fail to acknowledge the problem lies with us never that is why this verse is so powerful and proper in the purport if you pay attention is just talking about the one thing the supreme transcendental truth is lord krishna the first time i am seeing it is not supreme absolute truth but the supreme transcendental truth is lord krishna he is the supreme he is transcendental he is beyond this material world don't have any faith any other refuse not required the whole bhagavad gita centers around the declaration that krishna is the supreme personality of godhead very wonderfully in bhagavatam the first chapter first can to first verse it is mentioned um what is the first verse no. janmadasya yatah anvayad itaratas chartheshu abhigya swarad tene brahma hridayadi kavaye mushyanti yat surayah tejo vari mridam yatha vinimayo yatra trishargo mrsa dhamna svena sada nirasta kuhakam satyam param bhimahi I don't know how many of you know this or you don't know this but if you don't know this you should know this first you should you should actually this verse is just the beginning of bhagavatam not even just the first verse of bhagavatam and such a powerful verse the verse says that uh, i meditate upon that lord shri krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primeval cause of all causes of the creation sustenance and destruction of the manifested universes he is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations and he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him it is he only who first imparted the vedic knowledge unto the heart of brahma ji the original living being and by him even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion as one is bewildered by the illusory representation of water seen on fire and land seen on water only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reaction of three modes of nature appear factual although they are unreal i therefore meditate upon him lord krishna who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world i meditate upon him for he is the absolute truth exactly what we read in different words it is there in the purport uh which propad actually mentions in this verse so that is why you know very interestingly the word then the supreme transcendental one has to cross this material world and to cross the material world earlier we had seen 
one uh, verse uh, from Bhagavatam, which is a verse which is spoken by Brahma. Very interesting verse. Samashritaya pada pallava plavam mahat padam punya yasho murare bhavam budhir vatsa padam param padam 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 yad vipadam natesha. Actually, to cross over this material world, material ocean, it's impossible, extremely difficult, it's insurmountable. But Brahma is selling Samashrita, who has taken refuse or shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. Samashrita ye pada pallava plavam. Plavam is that boat. What is that boat? The boat of the lotus feet of the Lord. Samashrita ye pada pallava plavam. Mahat padam punya yasho murare. Bhavam budhir vatsa padam param padam. Actually, the, the whole gigantic ocean, the water in that, it shrinks. It shrinks to the size of the water that can be contained in a calf's footprint. Not even a cow's footprint. Cow's footprint maybe is, is bigger. Here it is mentioned. Bhavam uh, vatsa padam param padam. It is the water which can be contained in a calf's footprint. So we can one can easily cross over. Samashritaya Padapalla Vuplavam Mahat Padam Punya Yasho Murare. Bhavam Budhir Vatsa Padam Param Padam 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 Yad Vipadam Natesha. Padam Padam Yad Vipadam Natesha. This material world in every step, in every moment, there is danger. So the recommendation is to take shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. Now, um, now that you know we are Coming to an end of Kartik month, uh, whatever you know, we sang uh, Namadarashtaka, we will not be singing. But as I said, one needs to have this firm conviction to uh, give these four things Tad Buddhayas, Tad Atmanas, Tad Nishthas, Tad Parayana, Gachanti Apuna Ravratam, Jnana Nirdhuta Kalmasha. When one's intelligence, mind, faith, and refuse are all fixed in the Supreme, then one becomes fully cleansed of misgivings through complete knowledge and thus proceeds straight on the path of liberation. One last point before we close our time together. See, we've been hearing this wonderful pastime of Damodar. Doesn't mean that we can't hear anymore. We can certainly. So the important thing is to learn from all these different meditations that we did, from all these different themes that we took and we could discuss and meditate, that how it is so important to be engaged in devotional service of the Lord because that is what is our constitutional position. Even coming to devotion, devotional life, we miss that. And we try to do something, try to act smart, try to do something which we think nobody will know. How does it matter? I'll go and do something here. I'll do something. I'll not tell. What are we trying to do in this? Exactly that is what happened in the life of Ajamila. Vishaya Vidu Shita Sayam. Vishaya Vidu Sita Sayam. The aim in the life got polluted. So instead of you know being attached to the devotional service, the lotus feet of the Lord being attached to Nitai Goranga, one gets attached to some material hankering, some material sense gratification. And there's a symptom of that is disturbed, distrust. Even, you know, one service, you know, if there is a slight hesitation, it is to be understood that there is subtle sense gratification which is present within the heart. That is where, you know, there is, uh, why? Oh, what will happen? What will people say? All these kind of fears is because of that somewhere that is that misgivings which are there in our heart. So let us all pray to Lord Radha Damodar on today's uh, last day of Kartik that this misgivings in our heart, which are like small particles, but which are there in our heart, which we fail to acknowledge, or even if we acknowledge, let this be removed from our heart. Let our intelligence, mind, faith, and refuse the only Radha Damodar. With that thought, I will stop and we will sing now Damodara Ashtaka. And uh, you can join along and then offer lamps. <laughs> <laughs>